You're watching TVO. Yo. These are involved in making decisions more and more. This is TVO. Greetings, prisoners of gravity. This is Commander Rick cutting in with a comics quiz. Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster are famous for co-creating Superman. Bob Kane is known for Batman. But who created or co-created Captain America, the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, the Mighty Thor, Commandy, the Demon, the Forever People, Nick Fury, the New Gods, Mr. Miracle, and dozens of others? One man. Jack Kirby. There's more. Working in the 40s with writer Joe Simon, he created the genre of romance comics. In the 50s, he co-created the very first horror comic and wrote hundreds of Western comics. In the 60s, working with Stan Lee at Marvel, Jack's art style, his characters, and his storytelling techniques define superheroes. Any of these accomplishments would ensure a place of honor in the history of graphic storytelling. Taken together, well, Jack should be as famous as Walt Disney, but because he lacks the flair for self-promotion of, say, his longtime collaborator Stan Lee, Jack Kirby is not a household name. We're going to help change that. Roll it, Nancy. Anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe has voted English only sign. Mm. 40,000 tons of Armed with PCBs blew up the ozone layer today. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Jack, why did you become a cartoonist? Uh, I decided to become a cartoonist because I, well, uh, I discovered comics all by myself. I, uh, I was born on the Lower East Side of New York in a very uh, restricted area, really. And uh, uh, I, I just began to draw at, at a very, very young age, but it looked like I was marking up the tenement floor. But uh, I, uh, I, I, I took to that sort of thing and uh, uh, kept on with it un until I, I drew more complicated forms. And uh, gradually, I, uh, I found my way to uh, Atlas Comics, which later became Marvel. And why were you so drawn to the superhero form? Well, the superhero form is, uh, I, I think it's, uh, uh, it's something, uh, superhero form, I think, is a feeling more than a drawing. And uh, I, I like people naturally. And I see people, uh, uh, I see people larger than life because that, that's the only way I can draw them. And superheroes uh, came very naturally to me because uh, uh, that particular form of drawing uh, seemed to uh, represent my uh, ideal of uh, uh, what, men, what, men, what I liked about men and women in general. These days, we take so many of these standard elements of superheroes for granted. But back in the early 40s, when you were getting started, the medium was in its infancy. And one of the things that you helped establish was the concept of the superhero's alter ego. Why did you decide your characters should have two sides to their personalities? Well, because we all do. We all dream. Yes, we, 
We act realistically, but we dream beyond that reality. And our dreams make us larger. We all want to be larger, and we all want to see what's beyond um, all horizons. I believe it's part of the human makeup, and I reflect that in my drawings. What for you is the most important element in telling a story in comics? The most important thing about telling a story is telling the story. In other words, uh, uh, to, to be understood, to, to let the other person know what the story is all about, what the story represents, uh, whether it has a moral or not. Uh, the other person, uh, if he understands my story, he'll understand all those various facets of it. So uh, I try to tell a story uh, fully rounded. And I believe that I, uh, I've succeeded in that. If, if, you know, if you'll read my comics, you'll find that uh, between the beginning and the, and the end, uh, there were all sorts of happenings, a variety of happenings. And that's how life is. Right. But how do you lay that out on the page in order to give it maximum impact? Well, I gave it maximum impact. I gave it all the power I had in my own self. Mm -hmm. And uh, my heroes didn't merely walk, they ran. They had long strides. Uh, they were, uh, they were, uh, like I said, they, they represented power, the power of the individual. I've always worshipped the individual because I felt that uh, each individual has value. In giving value to other individuals, I give value to myself. And of course, that's self-satisfaction. I've lived my life that way, and uh, I've been happiest that way. It's not just the high quality of Jack's work that's astounding, it's the sheer quantity. Nancy, pick a year, any year at all. What a coincidence, that's the year I researched. In 1964, Jack drew 12 classic issues of the Fantastic Four, a 48-page annual, eight issues of the Avengers, six issues of X-Men, 178 pages of Thor, 25 for Tales of Asgard, three 10-page stories for Captain America, five issues of Sergeant Fury, over 100 covers, and a heap of extra images for promotion, about 1,100 pages total. Figuring on 250 working days in a year, that's over four pages a day, every day. As comic book writer Mark Avanier noted, even if the stuff stunk, that's impressive. But every page was different and exciting. Small wonder that Jack's work continues to inspire others. What kind of an impact did Jack Kirby's work have on you? If I imagine the same impact it had on everybody. Uh, Jack had a 75th birthday just a week or two ago. We were at the party for him. We were invited. and. Much of the latter part of the evening was spent by all of the people at the party, Neil Adams and Frank Miller, uh, all sorts of folks getting up Bill Stout and telling Jack what he had meant to all of us. And it is amazing. He, I mean, the king of comics is, sounds like a glib line, but he really is. There's, here's a man who's had an impact on the industry for five decades. Every decade, he was responsible for something that formed the way the industry went in those 10 years. There's no one else who can even come close to saying that sort of thing. Jack is, is, he is comics. He defined power. He defined imagination. I don't think anyone else will ever come close. Jack Kirby was, without a doubt, probably the, the singularly most important um, um, person in my developing a love for comic books um, uh, that I dynamic storytelling, the, the, um, just the way he made things come alive and pop off the page is what um, made me start drawing uh, comic books. I mean, you look at, you know, my mother saved all this stuff, but you look at all the early work that I had, and it was all like Kirby ripoff stuff, you know, with all the abstract, you know, blocky pieces of this and that, and the hugely exaggerated muscles and all these other things, and that's all my early work, and that sort of led into so many other things. Um, but uh, he's, uh, he's my hero. He's a real-life hero to me.